now constitution committee studied out constitutions of different nations at that time most probably the advanced or so called advanced nations at that time then obviously we were having familiar with uh, the government of india act that is of 1935 the finally we got after prolonged experiments from british government right from pits india act then whatever that charter act and all that finally we got this the most amended act that is a uh, 1935s act uh, so all that studied and then we prepared our constitution so uh, we have to discuss now that what is originally from our constitution uh, or rather i should say the things borrowed from other constitution so features borrowed from different constitution obviously we were ruled nearly 150 years by britishers that is called as uk united kingdom uh, forcefully united kingdom i should say but that is united kingdom uh, we borrowed from them that is parliamentary system we are aware that uh, after king george first that is in england uh, practically prime minister to control prime minister become active whereas uh, this person a uh, king become nominal chief we are carrying out uh, sorry britishers were carrying out and are carrying out everything under name of the crown okay so uh, that is just nominal chief but real power is there in the hands of parliament say for example whether to fetch war against germany or not during second world war decision was taken by parliament okay and then finally uh, it was said yes by king but initially the decision taking process is there that deciding process everything was decided in parliament so same thing that is we are calling parliamentary system then second rule of law we are going to discuss these all topics afterwards so uh, in next lecture only uh, that is features of indian constitution there we are going to discuss so right now i am explaining little bit rule of law that means we have to go according to law no person is above the law so like that things are there that is called as rule of law then law making procedure so it is made in the parliamentary houses either house of commons or house of lords so that was there in england similarly we borrowed from them then single citizenship so in india uh, if you are aware that suppose uh, now i am from maharashtra but i want to visit bihar so can i visit bihar answer is yes i can travel without visa without passport from one state to another state that is called as single citizenship now by cameralism here we can say the camera that is urdu word kamra like that two chambers we can consider like uh, uh, in case of shah jahan and all that they were having diwan e aam that is house of commons and diwan e khas house of lords so similar system that we adopted that is bicameralism uh, but we changed the name instead of house of commons we call it as lok sabha and house of lords we call it as rajya sabha uh, by the way uh, making words is also important and maximum contribution for making words is actually uh, going to a person that is swatantra vir savarkar he wrote fantastic books in earlier days only not for constitution directly during british rule only uh, his uh, book is famous as bhasha shuddhi so we had to adopt british words by making some uh, indian words uh, 99% words are drawn from sanskrit and like that uh, these uh, words were published and uh, after freedom many of these words are adopted here so bicameralism that is from uk so 
from UK we adopted parliamentary system, rule of law, law making procedure, single citizenship and bicameralism. Now USA, that is United States of America. Keep in mind, they are United States of America. Okay. Uh, from that we adopted preamble that we are going to discuss in some other lecture. We may be possible third lecture from this lecture we are going to discuss that is preamble. Then independence of judiciary. Now when uh, America that is USA got freedom from England. Afterwards there was no concept of king and what that medieval era that was having some uh, concept they were not there with them and so they were able to develop their free activity as human beings required like that they produce many things over there and so uh, they have independence of judicial then uh, judicial review uh, fundamental rights certain things we are considering them as fundamental rights we are going to discuss all these topics right now just I am giving names. You will also get familiar with this type of boards. Those who are not particularly from law field or uh, from political science field, they may get uh, these uh, some new words also. Removal of judges of Supreme Court. Now this procedure is very very difficult. But yeah, provision is there. President as executive head. Because earlier day I was uh, earlier uh, part we are discussing that in case of England, the chief, uh, we are working under name of under the crown or as long as crown, crown means what ultimately king, but here king is replaced by president. So president uh, as executive head, vice president as ex officio chairman of upper house, I am revising, vice president as ex officio, ex officio means what? Uh, once person is elected as vice president, automatically he is uh, considered as chairperson of upper house. In India that upper house is called as Rajya Sabha. So this is also borrowed from USA. So all these things we borrowed from USA. Now Canada. Uh, some issues are there with Canada uh, right now in 2023 uh, till here. But may be possible earlier we are going to solve it because when we are saying Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam then obviously we have to forgive certain parts. Uh, federal system with a strong center that is the important part of Canada. See when India was uh, we can say British rule was about to end and Indian freedom is about to achieve at that time there were many disputes. People were demanding fantastic things at that time. We want independent state, princely state. I want to keep my state as independent state. And like that things were there. Even Britishers were wanting that only. That's why in cabinet mission plan, in uh, Bevel plan, they were encouraging these uh, people uh, for example, let us make constitution of provinces separately. Let us make constitution of provinces separately. And from that constitution, we have to prepare a constitution of central government. But if any province don't like to stay with central government, they have freedom to get rid of central government. And they can proclaim, they can declare their own independence. Like that plans were there, cabinet mission plan, Bevel plan, they were intended to do so. And in that circumstances, we were having strong need that there should be a state that means central government. Central government should be so strong that it should enforce other all, uh, that means princely states or whatever the thing under strong control. So in Canada, they have this type of situation, the federal system, but having strong center. Division of powers and vesting of residuary powers with the center. So clearly, what are the powers of state government? 
and what is the power of central government and the residual power should be there in hands of central government only like that systems were there in canada then appointment of the state governors by the center no actually it was there in 1935 act also but we say that it is borrowed from canada so uh, we are aware that today also governors are appointed by president president means here central government and president we are aware that president is not doing anything on its uh, on his or her own will president should guide always by prime minister prime minister is leader of council so whatever the decision is taken by council that is conveyed by prime minister to uh, president and then president is acting on this so like that things are there so president is appointing governor so that means governors of all the states they are appointed by central government so this system uh, this system was uh, taken by canada then advisory jurisdiction of the supreme court supreme court can advise central government in many matter so this is also taken from canada so we discuss what we borrowed from uk what we borrowed from usa what we borrowed from canada now we are discussing about irish free state now uh, it is called as republic of ireland when they declared irish free state then irish slave test is a uh, slave state is also there doubt for that purpose uh, find out history of uk how uk was formed you will find that nearby territories were forcefully adopted by this uh, england ireland is a separate island beside england but it was dominated by english people and it was part of uk some of the irish part got freedom remaining is yet under control of uk only so whatever the freedom was there for irish the free irish part uh, if you are aware that in india this viceroys appointed by britishers were living like a king uh, i should not say king emperor viceroy that was for britain for india they were sarkar tremendous wealth was there with viceroy respect was given and to the surprise none of the single viceroy was executed in india by any arm revolutionary uh, arm revolutionaries no doubt attempts were made so for example uh, in bengal one attempt was made uh, that viceroy should killed by bomb blast under his railway when britishers changed capital of india uh, from attempted kolkata now kolkata to new delhi at that time lord hardings was viceroy he was entering in uh, new delhi or rather delhi like mughal emperor by sitting on elephant the great patriot the great revolutionist arm revolutionist and a successful arm revolutionist uh, for that observe history lecture uh, national freedom lecture uh, freedom struggle lecture uh, ras bihari bos he attempted to kill lord hardings by throwing a bomb unsuccessful only our orderly was injured but because of that that loud sound sound reached till england that everything is not fair in india but yet after all these attempts not a single viceroy was killed in india one viceroy uh, that is earl of mayo was executed but not by arm revolutionaries by some wahabi movement so afridi's name of that person uh, that is in andaman uh, he stabbed out and after many days that person died in india but apart from that do but the last viceroy 
of India, that is Lord Mountbatten, he was executed by Irish people. Not for Indian sake, for their own sake. But after returning to England, he was executed uh, with family. They attempted to kill him. Very brutal death was there for uh, this uh, Lord Mountbatten. But Ireland was there to get freedom, but not entirely yet. Uh, forget of that. Uh, what Irish Republic says, uh, they introduced directive principles of state policy. Now, personally speaking, I don't like directive principles. Personally. Why? Because directive principles are those that uh, how we should act. Now, you are there to make constitution. Why you should say directive principles? Who is there to direct you? So you can write down at that time that this is the thing. Okay, we are going to discuss this directive principle afterwards. Obviously, everything I am saying this way only. But uh, yeah, directive principles from uh, uh, we borrowed from Irish Free State. Then election of president. How president is elected? Very complicated process is there. Uh, we are going to discuss again afterward. But uh, yeah, that is there from Irish part. Then nomination of members to upper house. That is also uh, borrowed from Ireland. You are aware that in upper house in India, that means Rajya Sabha, 238 members are elected members, where 12 members are nominated members. So that procedure that we borrowed from Irish Free State, we are focusing. Uh, next uh, feature that borrowed from different constitution, that is Weimar constitution. Not very fluent in English also and German also. Now, uh, the spelling is W-E-I-M-A-R. So in Devanagari script, when I read this, it was written as Weimar. So I am pronouncing this as Weimar. If any correction is there, please mention in the uh, this uh, discussion part. So that Weimar constitution of Germany, particularly you are aware that uh, when there was end of First World War, Germany, that means uh, Persia actually, but uh, sorry, uh, Prussia, but uh, we can call it that Germany only, their name is Deutschland. But uh, in English we call them as Germans. So the German Emperor, Kaiser William II, he left out Germany. And all powers were vested in hands of a commander-in-chief named as Hindenburg. American President Woodrow Wilson, he given some plan and accordingly Germany surrendered. Then a committee was set up to make constitution. Committee was set up in a city called as Weimar. Therefore constitution is called as Weimar constitution. And then this constitution was having various principles. Uh, at that time it was considered as world's best constitution or rather world's ideal most constitution because they also studied out various constitutions of world at that time existing and then they prepared their own constitution that is called as Weimar constitution with that constitution only Hitler got power and absolute power afterwards by using that constitutional feature only and he rose to dictatorship now same thing is here when I am talking about Weimar constitution I must remember Hitler. Hitler means dictatorship and uh, emergency provisions, they are encouraging dictatorship. So uh, emergency provisions were introduced in Indian constitution that is from Weimar constitution that is of Germany. And you will find that in India, nationwide emergency was only once it was there uh, ruled and that was also by Congress party. Whatever name of Congress, but it was under 
Congress at that time. Now, uh, next, Australia. So, from Australia, we borrowed a concurrent list provision regarding trade, commerce, etc. Now, Union of South Africa. Amendment of the Constitution. This is most important feature. Otherwise, uh, Constitution should become stagnant. So, amendments are required and maximum amendments again carried out by Congress people only. Because they ruled, for, uh, ruled over India for a longer time. Now, uh, election of members of Rajya Sabha. It was also borrowed from Union of South Africa. So, Rajya Sabha, that is upper house, how the people should get there. Some complication, mathematics uh, part is also there. So, that we have to discuss when we are discussing Rajya Sabha. Now, France. From France, we borrowed Republican system. It was long war between England and France. In certain war, England and France, they were fighting where France was the loser. France came on turn, not completely defeated by Britishers and France forced to skip their colonies in hands of Britishers, American colonies particularly. The revenge was taken by France in such a way that uh, they started proxy war. When direct war is not possible, we have to start this type of war that is called as proxy war. So uh, like Pakistan is playing with India, making bomb blast, targeting commercial places, trade centers like that. So uh, it was started by, uh, started by France and uh, finally USA was formed because of all these things. English people were also driven out from USA, uh, that is from America. The rule of crown ended over America. Now Britain obviously they are going to take revenge. And the kingship of France, that uh, monarch uh, that was called as something uh, 16th Louis, with that same matter he was also executed. For a while, power was in hands of general, that is uh, Napoleon Bonaparte. But after defeat of that, no royal people were there in the France to rule. And then it was under Republic. So French constitution that is going for Republic. And uh, here also we borrowed that thing. That is the Republican system from France. Now French people are really liberal people. So ideas of liberty, equality, like that things, they are obtained from uh, France. Now we are missing out some big nation in the world. That is Russia. But at that time, that means when constitution was prepared, at that time it was not called as Russia, it was called as USSR. Uh, obviously, uh, USSR at that time was a communist nation. Communist means duties first, then rights. So, uh, here we can keep in mind this way, that fundamental duties were added in Indian constitution that is from USSR, ideas of justice included in the preamble, they are also uh, from USSR. Then uh, federal, okay, so these things were borrowed from uh, USSR. So these are foreign nations, from them we obtained all these things, we borrowed these things in our constitution. Now, uh, the next part, should I call it as foreign or Indian, I don't know. Because it is uh, Government of India Act of 1935. It was made for India, but not by Indians, by Britishers only. Therefore, I am saying that whether I should say it is foreign or Indian. Again, thing is that in 1928, Nehru report was given that is under committee of Pandit Motilal Nehru and in 1935 maximum 
part is based on Nehru report only. That's why again I am asking questions, should I call this as Indian or uh, foreign? But anyway, uh, we are saying that Government of India Act 1935, from that we obtained federal scheme. So whatever at that time provinces were there, provinces were given certain rights, certain things were in hands of provincial government, certain things were in hands of central government. So that then office of the governor, most important thing. So a governor to control these all things. Otherwise governor is just we can say a showpiece. But whenever critical position is there, governor's role is prime important in the constitution. So all these things were borrowed from 1935's act. Then powers of federal judiciary. So this is also important. So in fact, almost two-thirds of the constitution is having origin in 1935's act. So this is something we are discussing about features borrowed from different constitution. Thanks for observing this lecture. In next lecture, we are going to discuss about features of Indian constitution.